Hey, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the a Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we discuss the always interesting, always fascinating form factors. Hey, and welcome. In this episode, we want to take a look at form factors. Form factors specify the physical dimensions of some computer components typically used for motherboards and this can also apply to computer cases as well as power supplies basically it's a predefined kind of parameters of the size of the motherboard as well as for example power supplies that can be plugged into the motherboards and here are the form factors that you need to know for your certification exam and these again are not all the form factors that are out there this is what you should be aware of as a computer technician as well as for your certification exam. So we have the ATX, the micro ATX, the ITX, and the BTX. Taking a look first at the ATX. First of all, ATX stands for Advanced Technology Extended. We like that advanced word, don't we? It was created by Intel in the mid-1990s, and it's pretty much been the standard ever since. Now, there have been some challengers to the crown, but ATX has remained king of the form factors. It measures 12 inches by 9.6 inches, and unfortunately, yes, you need to memorize these numbers for your exam. It comes with an integrated port cluster at the back. If you remember, we looked at the back connecting connectors for USB audio. This comes with an integrated back connector. And you also have a, a metal uh, covering to cover up the parts that you're not using. And that helps with heat flow. It keeps um, the flow of the air going the right way and all that stuff. RAM slots and expansion bus slots are perpendicular to each other. Again, that is a very good test question. So once again, I'm going to repeat it. The RAM slots and expansion bus slots are perpendicular to each other. And the voltage supply to an ATX motherboard, ding, 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 yes, also on the exam, is, as you can see, the 3.3 volts, the 5 volts, the 12 volts, the negative 12 volts outputs, and the uh, plus 5 volt standby output. And you need to know, again, the voltage for the exam. So the ATX form factor, original power supply connection to the motherboard use a 20 pin connection, and this was called a P1. So the original power supply used a 20 pin connector, and this was called a P1. Modern motherboards, ATX boards, uses a 24 pin connector. Then we have something called the micro ATX. And micro, you would assume it'd be smaller than the other version of ATX, and you would be correct. It's also known as the MATX. It's a smaller version of the ATX form factor. Maximum size is 9.6 inches by 9.6 inches. So it's much more of a square, 9.6 by 9.6. It can be as small, however, as 6.75 inches by 6.75 inches. So we're having a range here. Now, I used to teach this, and we had different types of uh, smaller ATX, like micro and mini. I don't, we're not worried about that anymore. It's just micro ATX, and you have the um, size range typically has the same power connector connection and chipset as the ATX then we have the ITX ITX came from a group of form factors created by via technology Inc used for low power small motherboards and this includes the mini ITX the nano ITX the Pico ITX and the mobile ITX Taking a look first at the mini ITX, this was 6.7 inches by 6.7 inches, used passive cooling, meaning it got cooled just from regular airflow by what was around it. The nano ITX was 4.7 inches by 4.7 inches, low power consumption used for media centers, personal video recorders. The Pico ITX was 3.9 inches by 2.8 inches. This needed active cooling, so you had to have some sort of cooling system running to keep it cool and this was for very small pcs and ultra mobile pcs and then we had the mobile itx this was the smallest of the four itx form factors you can see it was 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters no ports and used for military surveying transportation smartphones so this was really really small 
And finally, we have the BTX. The BTX was supposed to be the new standard. It was designed to address some of the problems that we had with the ATX. BTX stands for Balanced Technology Extended. It was created by Intel in 2004. And again, it was designed to try to replace the ATX. Didn't do it, though. Mainly, it was created to help with um, heat dis dispersion. It was designed for thermal issues. So it was supposed to get rid of heat better. It was supposed to deal with heat better. BTX and ATX are not compatible. And the layout difference, and you need to know the layout difference from ATX. RAM slots and expansion buses are parallel to each other on the BTX. The port cluster is different on a BTX board, and the CPU has been moved to the front of the motherboard. All right, our next video, we're going to take a look at troubleshooting motherboards.